page 95 in our workbook, the remaining two similarity tests are side, 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 and side, angle, side. In side, 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 you would have two triangles of um, similar shapes, and there is going to be some constant value that will take you from one to the other when you're matching up corresponding sides. Let's just do an easy one, and let's just say that um, this is eight, and half of that is four. Let's say that that was 12, that would have to be six, and if this side was nine, this would have to be 4.5. And you can see that each one of these larger values is just multiplied by a half to give you the smaller values. That's what it means to be a proportional. Sometimes you'll just set up ratios. So you can do 8 over its matching value, 12 over its matching value, and 9 over its matching value. And then just simplify all of these fractions. And every single one of them either reduces down or basically builds up so that you end up with 2 over 1 or just 2, okay? Comparing the large to the small. Every single one of them, if you were to divide them, is equal to 2. So that's one way that you can test that they're proportional. Side angle side would involve having a triangle where, again, I'll just go with 8 and 12, but you know the measure of that angle, and then maybe you have a smaller triangle where the measure of the angle is congruent, and then each of these sides, four is half of eight, six is half of 12. That relationship from big to small is the same in both cases. So you have a pair of proportional sides, another pair of proportional sides, and the angle that falls between them. That's what side angle side would look like, okay? So we have side, 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 and side angle side. And let's just do a couple of problems where we'll actually go ahead and test that. So down here in example one, determine whether they're um, similar or not. And we'll be using one of these two tests, but notice that they're asking us to set up these ratios. So how long is side JL? What's the distance from J to L? That's gonna be 12 over QM, which is nine. And 12 over nine, those are both divisible by three, is gonna reduce down to four thirds. Um, this number that's in the top of each of these ratios is coming from the bigger triangle each time, and the value that they're putting in the bottom is coming from the smaller triangle, so you have to be consistent. So LK is 8, and they're matching it up with MP, which is 6. Those are both divisible by 2, and that also reduces down to 4 thirds. And then JK is being matched up with PQ. JK is 16, PQ is 12, both divisible by four, and that reduces down to four thirds. So how do you know which sides to match when you don't have a similarity statement? Well, if there's any chance of them being proportional, notice that JL is of the three side links, it's the middle side, eight is smaller, 16 is bigger. It's the middle. Which side was the middle side over here? Nine. So the 12 and the nine went together. When they chose to, the eight, that was the smallest value. So you're gonna match that with the smallest and so on. You're matching with its corresponding side. So since all three of those pairs give us the same ratio, our sides are proportional and we use the side, side, side test in order to do that. Another way to set it up if you don't really care for the ratios is we know that the concept of scale factor has to be the same. Um, so I'm taking values from the big triangle, multiplying by the scale factor to produce its matching value. And you'll see the mass the same. If you divide by eight, um, I'm gonna end up cutting both of those in half and I get three fourths over here. Uh, the 16 needs to be multiplied by something to make it become 12, and that value has to be the same in all three of these equations. So when we divide both sides by 16, we'll get 3 fourths, and then finally 12 and 9 match up. So, so far the scale factor appears to be the same, and if we divide both sides by 12, we get that k equals 3 
force, okay? So this scale factor is taking us in this direction. It's taking us from the big triangle to the small triangle. It's reducing it. But I was able to see that the scale factor was the same in all three situations. That's just another way to show that they're gonna be similar by side, 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 okay? So it's basically one or the other. Do you like doing the scale factor or do you like looking at the ratios? All right, so decide whether these triangles are similar and tell how we know. Well, in this case, I don't have um, three different sides, so I don't exactly know for sure um, which side is the smallest, but that's okay, I know that they share those angles. Vertical angles are congruent. And if these are going to be proportional with these, then I certainly wouldn't want to pair the smallest value here with the largest value there. So 10 is the smaller of the two. Let's test it with a scale factor. Is there something I could multiply 10 by to make it become 20? Well, of course, we would get two in that case. So the same thing here. Is there something we could multiply 11 by to make it become 22? Yes. So there's a constant scale factor that's taking us from the smaller to the larger. That means those sides are proportional. And the included angle between those sides is also congruent. So we're going to say yes. They're similar by the side included angle side test, similarity test. Okay, so how could we find missing values knowing that? So first of all, we wanna show that these triangles are similar to one another. Um, I'm not really gonna use what they have worked out for us. We'll do this work, I think, over in the column. All right, so we've seen this before. What we have are nested triangles. So I know they share angle M. In fact, let me just quickly sketch this separate. So we have triangle M, Q, N, where this is five, this is six, and this is x. And then we have the bigger triangle, M, P, Q. How long is M, P? It's five plus three. That whole side is eight units long. This entire side in the big triangle, six plus three and three fifths is gonna be nine and three fifths long. And then the bottom side is x plus two and a fourth. Okay, so we do have some fractional values, but they share the M, so we know that's congruent. Notice that these are parallel to one another, and this angle here is in the upper left position if I extend that side, and this angle is in the same position. Those are corresponding angles, and those are congruent to each other. So we can say yes, these yes, they're similar by angle, angle, I always try to use angle, angle, it's the fastest. So since they're similar, I know that the sides are proportional and I should be able to set up a ratio to find, excuse me, set up a proportion to find my missing side length. I would prefer not to use the fraction if I don't have to, and I shouldn't. And what do they want us to find, by the way? Um, find the links of Q, N, and P, O, okay? Well, in order to do that, I just need to know the value of X. So when I set up my proportion, and I'll work it in the space down here, so let me zoom out just a little bit. I think I can, yes. When I set up my proportion, I'm going to do little triangle over big every time when I write my ratios. So I'm gonna start with a pair of sides that, um, I know match. So five and eight correspond. So five over eight equals, now I need to grab a side from this small triangle. And I want to use X because I'm trying to find X. And that was that bottom side across from the angle. And the corresponding side in this triangle is this one. One fourth is 0.25. Let's go ahead and um, use the decimal in this case. So this is 2.25. All right, so now we just need to take our cross products and solve for x here. So on the diagonal, the five needs to be multiplied through times that, and that's equal to the other product, eight times x. Distribute through, and we'll get five x plus 
five times two and a quarter is 11 and 25 hundredths, and that's equal to 8x. If we now get our x's together, I'll subtract 5x from both sides, and we'll have that 11 and 25 hundredths is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3, and 3 goes into that. 3.75 is what we'll have for x. Okay, so we have to find QN and PO. Well, QN is just the value of x, so QN is equal to 3.75, and PO, PO is x plus 2 and 25 hundredths, and it was 3.75. So add those two things together and we'll get six for PO. All right, let's look at some problems in the problem set. So determine whether they're similar, and if they are, we're gonna write a similarity statement. Well, we have two pair of sides that are congruent and two pair of sides that are congruent. So no matter what this number is, let's just make up a number for a second. If this is seven and this is 14, well, what's the scale factor that takes me in this direction? I would have to multiply by two. And because these are equal, Whatever I multiply by there, I'm also going to multiply by there, no matter what it is. So these sides will be proportional and the angle is congruent. So yes, they're similar. Notice the angle is between the two sides. They're similar by side, angle, side, similarity. So we have to write a statement. So let's do triangle TSR is similar to, similar, um, usually we have to be really careful about these sides, but since these are congruent, just be sure S is in the middle. We'll just do WSX to triangle WSX, and that works. Okay, what about number three? Well, we can see that the 70 degree angle is congruent, so we simply want to see if our scale factor um, is the same. So the smaller of the two values is 10, so 10 times K would equal 15, and then we also would need to do 14 times something to get us 21. 14 times k equals 21. When we solve these, if k is the same value in both situations, then this is a proportional relationship. So dividing both sides by 10, we're gonna get that k equals 1.5. Dividing both sides by 14, seven, these are both divisible by seven. Seven goes into 21 three times, it goes into 14 two times, and we know that three halves is the same as one and a half or 1.5. So the scale factor is the same for both, so the sides are proportional, and we've got a side, the included angle, and a side. So once again, it's yes by side angle, side similarity, and we need to write a statement I can call the one on the left whatever I want. I'll call it T-S-U, sorry. And that's similar to triangle T-S-U. So T walks along the side that's 10, that's the small side, down to S. So in order to walk along the small side down to the angle, I need to go P to J. So it's gonna be similar to P, J, and I'll finish that up with an M. All right, identify the similar triangles and then solve for x. Well, in this case, these two triangles have the vertical angles and the right angles. So I know they're similar by angle, angle. I'm gonna write my statement, it will help me. I'm gonna call the bigger one I, H, J. And it is similar too. Okay, be careful when you write your statement. When I did IH, I went from the unmarked angle to the right angle. So going from the unmarked to the marked, I'd have to do L, K, and finish at J. L, K, J. So this is gonna help me write my statement. When I set my proportion up, I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to do big triangle over little triangle every time. So picking a value from the big, I'll go with 8. 8 is side IH. IH matches up with LK, so that'll be 8 
and four, sorry, big over small. Then I go back to the big and I'm gonna take the side of 10. 10 is the side that connects the right angle and the marked angle. The right angle and the marked angle are connected with the X. So take cross products, eight times X is equal to 40, divide both sides by eight and X is five. Okay, all right, in number seven, we have a pair of triangles and we have to identify the similar triangles. So I know that the angle that they share is congruent. Let's test the two, let's test the two sides that form the angle. So three is the smallest side to nine. Um, if I multiply three times some number to give me nine, I can see that that scale factor would have to be three. Four is the middle side, but it's the other leg of the right angle. So four would have to be matched with the six points. Oh, I did that wrong, I'm very sorry. Excuse me. So how do I know I did that wrong? Three is the smaller of the two legs. It has to be matched with the smaller of the two legs. I did that backwards. Okay, they're not asking us to see if they're similar. They're telling us to identify the similar triangles, but we should test that. So my apologies. So three times K would have to equal 6.75. Divide both sides by three, and we're gonna get that K is equal to 2.25. And let's just make sure that works to take me from four to nine, okay? So four times K equals nine. When you divide by four, you do indeed get 2.25. Okay, so that's the scale factor. So the similar triangles are, it's gonna be triangle, um, I'll just call it WUV and that is similar to triangle. So I went from the small to the medium. So over here, I would have to go in this direction, the small to the medium. We know the hypotenuse is the longest. So it would be TRS. And then we just need to find X. And I don't really need to write a proportion for this because I already found the scale factor. Notice I was multiplying the small value by the scale factor to produce the large. I was going in this direction um, so let's just set the equation up that way. So we're gonna multiply the hypotenuse in the small one by the scale factor to give me the hypotenuse in the big one. And I know what the scale factor is, it's 2.25. Um, so once again, we've seen this earlier today. This is gonna be 11 and 25 hundredths for X for that missing side, okay? All right, we'll practice more of these in class.